Now we're going to focus in on the fusion and vaporization of water. So let's start with a little bit of review about fusion and vaporization. So what is it? So we've got the heat of vaporization. This is the amount of heat needed to turn a liquid into a vapor. And we have the heat of fusion, which is the amount of heat needed to turn a solid into a liquid. So we're looking at phase changes. So as we change from one phase into another. Okay, so we've got two equations here. So for the heat of vaporization, turning a liquid into a vapor, Q equals M times H of V. And for heat of fusion, when we turn a solid into a liquid, we have Q equals M times H of F. Okay, so what are these letters? So Q, just like we've done recently, is energy. So energy is going to be measured in joules. M is still for mass, and we're still going to be measuring that in grams. And in these problems, you need to make sure you're using grams. And if you're calculating this, make sure you're giving your answer in grams, unless it asks you to convert. Don't convert unless it asks you to. Then the H of V, or H of F, these are heat of vapor for H of V, H of S, heat of fusion. These are constants. So this measurement is constants for every different substance. And each substance has its own unique heat of vaporization or heat of fusion, depending on what it is. Okay, just like every substance has its own specific heat, every substance has its own heat of vaporization and heat of fusion. Okay, so normally you would find these numbers in reference tables, reference charts, so you would look them up. For our purposes, for our class, we're going to focus in on water. Okay, so we're just going to study water. But just be aware that in the future, if you take more chemistry, you delve deeper, that you will be able to study this with other substances and need to use reference tables to find those numbers, those constants, okay? But for us, let's go ahead and add these equations to our equation chart that we have been developing all semester. Be sure to include what each letter represents as well as the expected unit. And then our constant for water, the heat of vaporization of water, so the amount of heat needed to turn liquid water into vapor water is 2,260 joules per gram. So what that means is that for every one gram of water, it takes 2,260 joules of energy to turn it from liquid into vapor. The H of S, or sorry, H of F, heat of fusion for water is 334 joules per gram, which means that for every one gram of water, it takes 334 joules of energy to turn it from solid to liquid. Okay? So be sure to add those two constants to our equation chart as well, that sheet that we've been growing. All right, so how is this different from specific heat? We just got done studying specific heat not too long ago, and we know that specific heat is also involved with these same sorts of ideas, the mass, the energy. So what's the difference? Okay, the difference is that with specific heat, the temperature is changing. It's occurring over a temperature change. With the heat of vaporization, the heat of fusion, this is occurring at the phase change. And during that phase change, there is no temperature change. Okay, so with these, the heat of vaporization, the heat of fusion, the temperature is maintaining constant at a specific temperature that allows those atoms and molecules to change phases. Okay, from liquid into vapor or from solid into liquid. Okay, so no temperature change. Specific heat involves temperature change. 
Okay, so be aware of that big difference. All right, so let's do some example problems and see how this looks. For our example problems, the first thing we're going to have to decide is which equation and which constant do we need to use? So there's some key words for you that you can look for. So you want to make sure that you're reading the problem carefully to know what's happening. Is our water turning from a liquid into a vapor? So is it evaporating or possibly boiling? So those are two words that would let you know we're going from liquid to gas. Uh, for heat of fusion, we're going from a solid to a liquid. So things like uh, melting would be a good keyword to let you know. Okay, so you've got to read the problem carefully to know which equation do I need and thus which constant do I need. But again, we're only focusing on water in our class. So let's take a look at this example problem. Okay, I dropped a cup of water and spilled it all over my kitchen floor. I spilled a total of 110 grams of water. If all the water evaporates, how much energy did the water absorb from the surroundings? Okay, so let's take a look at what I've got. I've got my mass of water is 110 grams. I want to know how much energy was absorbed, so that's my Q is my unknown, and I know that my substance is water. And for our purposes, our substance is always going to be water. Okay, all right, so if we look at what's happening here, it says if all the water evaporates, okay, evaporating means that it's going from liquid to gas. So that means I need my heat of vaporization equation. Okay, so let's just plug our numbers in. Q is my unknown, so I'm going to put an X there. My mass is 110, and since I'm using my vaporization, I use my heat of vaporization constant for water, which is 2,260 joules per gram. All I've got to do is multiply those numbers together, and then round for proper sig figs. Since this number right here, 110, has only two sig figs, my answer must also have two sig figs, so I round it to 250,000 joules, and it's joules, because I did grams here over grams here, so those two canceled each other out, and I'm left with just joules, and that's the unit I should be left with because Q is for energy, so energy should be in joules. Okay, if you are working along with me and you did not get the same answer or you do not understand this process, please, please, please get into contact with me. Let me walk you through the process, ask you some questions so we can see where you're getting stuck because up next is your independent practice.